Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Math with Mr. Emont. Today we are going to be continuing on in our unit on quadratic inequalities. We're actually going to be starting outcome 9b here though, which is section 9.2 of your textbook. And all this outcome deals with is quadratic inequalities with only one variable. So before we were dealing thing with things like ax squared plus bx plus c is less than y which would have had two variables, the X and the Y. The only difference now is that they're not set equal to Y, they're gonna be set equal to zero. So we're only dealing with one variable, the X variable. And it can be in those following four forms, less than, less than or equal, greater than or greater than or equal. A, B and C are still gonna be real numbers and A cannot be zero, which means that it can be less than or equal to zero. And we're gonna have a couple videos for this particular mini lesson, we're going to be dealing with uh, solving these quadratic inequalities graphically or algebraically. And there's a different methods to do it algebraically. And so we'll have one video for each method of solving. And just remember that our solution set can have no values. It can have one value or it can have an infinite number of values. All right, so let's go ahead and try this out. So we are going to be working on uh, using a method called case analysis in this lesson. And we're actually gonna mix that with one other method to test our solution. And so we're dealing with the quadratic negative x squared plus x plus 12 is less than or equal to zero. So we have a negative a value this time and we're gonna be doing case analysis. Now, the way case analysis is gonna start is much like with the previous ones. So we're going to start off by factoring. Now, this is a little bit of a challenging one to factor in your head, uh, but you know, you'll be able to do it a little bit quicker with practice. So we are gonna have negative x and x, and you're gonna have positive four and positive three. And notice you have the negative there. So we want this to be the three, and this to be the four. And you can check your solution here. So you have negative x squared minus three x plus four x, which is gonna give us plus x and plus 12. So I know you might not be uh, quite at that speed yet for these ones, but they just require a little bit of uh, thinking in order to, to be able to do that. And at this point, we're gonna have to uh, think about our possible cases. So. Case number one is going to happen in this way. We know that we need it to be less than or equal to zero. How do you get something less than or equal to zero? Well, the way that would work is in case one, this parentheses, negative x plus four, x could be something that results in this parentheses being positive. And in order for this times this to be less than zero, that means that this parentheses, x plus three, has to be negative. Because in order to get it to be less than or equal to zero, you have to have a positive times a negative. A positive times a negative gives a negative. Now case two then is gonna be just a little different. It's going to happen when this one, negative x plus four is negative, and this one, x plus three, is positive. That's your second case, your second possibility. And so now we're going to have to kind of uh, play with this a little bit. So let's do case one first. All right. So we're looking at it being positive. And what's being positive? Well, negative x plus four is being positive. Positive meaning it's going to be greater than or equal to zero. So now we're gonna to have to isolate x here in order to kind of come up with our little mini inequality. And so we're gonna add x to both sides. And this is gonna get us four is greater than or equal to x, which means x is less than or equal to four. And so now I'm gonna be able to graph that and x is less than or equal to it. And I'm just gonna draw my line going that way. All right, let's do the second one. So this is gonna be negative. What's being negative? X plus three is being negative. Negative means less than or equal to zero. Now we're gonna isolate X by subtracting three. So X is gonna be less than or equal to negative three. And here's our negative three and 
and we're going this way. Now what we're gonna do, the way we analyze this, is we look at where the overlap is, if there's any, and it's to the left of this. And so what is that? Well, that's when x is less than or equal to negative three is when they start to overlap. And that's actually gonna be part of our solution, but we're not done because we need to check if there's any possible solutions in case two. And so let's try out case two. Case two happens when negative x plus four is actually gonna be negative, and so less than or equal to zero. And here we're gonna isolate x again, so we're gonna add x to both sides, and that's gonna give us x is greater than or equal to four. So here's my four and x is greater than or equal to it. Now we have x plus three, and in this case it has to be positive, so greater than or equal to zero. We're gonna subtract three from both sides, so we're gonna have x is greater than or equal to negative three. So here's our negative three and x is greater than or equal to it. So again, I'm noticing we have a period of overlap right there. And where is this period of overlap? It's when x is actually greater than or equal to, and in this case, it's four. And that means my solution set, now that I've done both cases, is x such that x has to be less than or equal to negative three. So x has to be less than or equal to negative three, and x has to be greater than or equal to four, and of course, x is an element of real numbers. And that would be my solution by doing this with case analysis. Now, we said before we're gonna try one other method, and so here I've, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and graph it, so I'm gonna erase this graph and I'm gonna add a new one and I'm going to type it in. So negative x squared plus x plus 12. And there's my graph. Now I'm going to, uh, actually I'm gonna find zeros because this is gonna be the quick way. So there's my one zero. All right, so when is this gonna be less than or equal to zero? Well, we can see it's from this intercept, which is x equals four, and it has to be greater than or equal to four. So let's go ahead and check our answer. So greater than or equal to four is right there. So we're good. And x has to be less than or equal to negative three, which is there. And so we tested our solution uh, graphically, and it certainly does work. So we, we, we did it correctly. All right, so case analysis and the other method was graphical. Now, why don't you go ahead and try case analysis? So just remember, you need to kind of first factor, then identify your two cases, and then you're going to kind of plot them on number lines to see when they overlap, and any overlap is going to be areas that are part of your solution. So go ahead and give this a shot, it's your turn. The inequality that you're working with is negative x squared plus 3x plus 10. So again, another difficult-ish one to factor because you have an a less than zero, but we need to practice it. Go ahead and try it out, and I'll have the solution ready for you when you return. See you soon. All right, I have the solution here for you. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. So we uh, first factored it to be negative x minus 2 and x minus 5. And of course, this is less than zero. And so for my case one, that was my first parenthesis is gonna be positive, my second one's gonna be negative. That's gonna result in less than zero. And so I have my negative x minus two has to be positive, so greater than zero, which means x has to be less than negative two. And so I graph that uh, in red here. There you go. And x minus five, it has to be negative, so less than zero. So x has to be less than five, and that's this one. And we can see an area of overlap. And that area of overlap is gonna be x less than uh, negative two. And notice my dots are open here because it's not uh, equal to. It's just less than. So I have open dots there. Case number two is when the first parentheses is negative, the second one's positive. So here we split it up so we have x greater than negative two, which is this one, and we have uh, x greater than five, which is this one, again with the open dots, right? 
and we have an area of overlap again. That area of overlap is when x is greater than 5. And so we can combine these. x has to be greater than 5 and x has to be less than negative 2. And x is all real numbers. Now, for the second one, we're, we're, you probably did it graphically, right? Because that's just the easier method to do. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to add a graph and we're going to type in negative x squared plus 3x plus 10. And we're going to graph it. And I can see when it's less than zero, uh, but just to make it easier, we're going to analyze for zeros. There we go. So x has to be greater than five. Is that what we had? Yes. And what's the other one? X has to be less than negative two, which is the other one. And so there we go. We tested our solution. So That's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be solving some word problems. All right. See you then. Thanks for watching, everybody. You can like, follow, and subscribe to my social medias to get notifications as soon as new content is uploaded. In the top corner here, you will find the playlist that this video is in. Watch the unit from beginning to end. And over here, you will find the next video in this unit. Keep learning, everybody. Take care.